Worlds. My name is Don, and uh, thanks for clicking on our video here. Uh, we have several videos that we're putting together and that we've already put out there as we uh, renovate this RV that we bought from top to bottom. This particular episode, we are doing a passenger and driver's seat renovation. So in the rest of this next video, you're actually gonna see us, uh, the whole process from buying it online to delivery, to install, to tearing out the old seats, all that good stuff, and some of the accessories that we bought too. So uh, strap yourselves in. If you uh, are doing the same kind of thing, it's not that hard, you can do it. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. The hardest part is picking them out and buying them, uh, in my opinion anyway. So uh, let's, uh, let's transition over to uh, buying these seats. You can see the process from beginning to end. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. And hey, while you're at it, go ahead and uh, click subscribe below. That'd be pretty cool too. All right, here we go. So this is the website where I am buying seats from, shopforseats.com. And they have a pretty good selection here. See on the right, um, they have a bunch of different RV captain's chairs, a uh, bunch of RV furniture. So if you're looking for couches, those kind of things, uh, this is a, a good site to look at. Um, the one that I believe we're going to go with is, so we're not getting the one with the seatbelt integrated. Uh, we're getting the De Leon. So this is the one that we uh, went with here. So if you see when you click on it, they have a lot of options that you can go with. Um, fabric or ultimate leather. Um, we're doing the ultimate leather just because it feels so much nicer. But they have a pretty good selection of colors that you can choose from as well, which is pretty cool. And they do have, um, if you go to right there, request a free material sample, Within a couple days, they'll actually send you a really nice binder so you can actually see them and feel exactly what it looks like. So uh, definitely do that if you're if you're looking for new seats. It really does change uh, the look of everything by replacing those seats. So we are going with black. That's the color we want to go with. So if you click the color that you want, um, I'm not sure if it changes up here or not. It doesn't look like it does. But this is the uh, the color that we're going with. It's pretty nice looking. And then they have a lot of other options for you as well. Um, so you can customize your seat to add all of these different things here. Um, we did the foam upgrade. Uh, we also did manual lumbar support, at least for the driver's seat, not necessarily for the pa uh, passenger seat, but you know, the driver you know, may need that little extra support. Um, there's a lot of other options. We did also the flex steel base handle, uh, which I'll show you in a little bit uh, what that's for and, and how we installed that. But there, as you can see, there's a lot of great options there. We don't have a power connection under our seat. So had we done that, I would have definitely considered the seat massage. That would have been pretty cool. You know, but there's a lot of really great uh, features you can put on there to get a really nice chair. So this is how the seats get here. They pack them up. This is one looks like when it's out of the box. Um, these are the the, uh, the screws that go in there on the bottom. The only problem is I can't tell if this is a passenger seat or the driver's seat. Uh, it's kind of hard and they're not labeled. And today, I'm gonna be getting rid of these ugly, ugly seats. They're in pretty bad shape and they don't smell good and they have cigarette holes. So we're getting rid of them. I've already pulled the other one out over there and uh, gonna pull this one out shortly. Well, this piece of junk finally came out of the car. I failed to uh, record actually taking it out, but I'm going to at least film the process of putting the new one back in. So I removed the passenger seat and that's what the base looks like. All it is is four screws that hold it down so I'm going to go get the uh, new one. I've taken off the old seat belt and I'm going to replace that with a brand new one. But this is the base. It's pretty standard from what I understand. 
So hopefully those screw holes all line up perfectly and everything will go smooth. So this is the old one. Such grossness, so gross. But those are the screws I'm trying to match up here. Hopefully they will be the same. Because I think the way that these were sold, uh, and I will post the link here on this video because I don't really remember where I bought it from. I think it was shopforseats.com. It took a while. Their factory shut down for several weeks with no notice, but I talked to them and explained the need to get them soon and they were really great about getting it out to me very quickly. But the seats are custom made and will be a definite upgrade over these disgusting, disgusting chairs. Let's see, these screws are exactly 11 inches. So let's hope we get 11 inches on the new one. All right, so this is the new passenger chair, passenger seat, and uh, right at 11. All right, perfect. All right, so let's put this seat down. Put her, let's land her in here. Just a matter of putting these four screws right into these holes. Easier said than done, but not too ridiculously hard. All right. Okay, let's see here. All right, one in, two in, there we go. Now, to bolt them in from the bottom. These are hard to see. I don't know if you can see it or not. But you've got to get up into there and just tighten that by finger and uh there's four of those one there one down that end same on the other sides once you bolt those in your chair is probably done don't want to speak too soon all right and now it's time for the driver's side so i've already done a couple of these bolts underneath but let's get the rest out and then we'll remove this guy and put the new one in you can see why uh, why this this seat really needs replacing. It's pretty bad. All right, so here's where I'm having the problem on both of these. They're so close to going in, but they're just slightly off because it's not just a matter of setting it down. You know, this thing's running on like a little little uh, movable movable tray here. I don't even know what you call it, but the thing that you know that moves the seat around and. Every time you think you've got it in place, the whole thing slides over on you. But it will fit, I know it will. It's just a matter of trying to get this thing to budge. It's harder than you think. There's four bolts underneath, one here, one back here, and two in the front. And the hard part was getting them to match up exactly to the holes that came on the seat. But it's pretty standard from what I understand. And those, uh, those bolts went right in, you tighten them up and you're good to go. They're a little harder to see in the back because there's a little lip there, but there's one underneath and then there's one over here on this side. But you just put the seat in, tighten those bolts and you're good to go. It's pretty simple. Uh, the hard part is what I'm about to show you next. So this is the armrest that came from Shop for Seats with my, uh, with my RV chair. And what's irritating to me is there's nowhere to put it. So after looking all over the place through the boxes, hoping to see instructions or something, I had to go on their website. It wasn't even really post anywhere for installation instructions, but uh, fortunately somebody made a comment that there's a YouTube video that somebody from Shop for Seats had sent them. So went all over YouTube, looked for it, wasn't that hard to find. And uh, it turns out that if I want to install this armrest, I have to cut a hole in the leather. Let me show you. So the idea is you measure 12 inches up, find a little spot, which I think is there, and then you cut through. So with all the customization options that they had on the website, I'm a little irritated that I couldn't have paid like an extra five bucks and had somebody there do that for me because what happens if for some reason I do this wrong? 
you know, that I doubt they would uh, refund or fix it or anything like that. So that's kind of irritating. I know some people only want one arm, but customize it. For crying out loud, we've got all kinds of stuff customized on there. Thicker seats, heated seats, massage chair inserts, all that kind of stuff. It would have been nice. I would happily have paid $5 to have you cut the hole in the leather just to make sure I didn't mess this up. But looks like it's what I'm going to have to do. So here we go. So I've measured 12 inches and right there is uh, the spot it feels like. So let's channel my inner uh, plastic surgeon here and hope I don't mess this up. And I'm going to try to not necessarily to film every little thing here, but I just don't want to mess up the seat. I feel like, oh my gosh, I just paid. These seats are like $700 a piece. And here I am, first day install, cutting through the leather. It's kind of unnerving. Uh, but I'm thinking that's probably it. Let's uh, give that a shot and see if if that's big enough for hopefully in the right spot. I love their explanation is approximately 12 inches. Uh, approximately better be dang right. All right, I'm feeling like a surgeon now and I can feel the hole in there where this is supposed to fit. So it looks like we're dead on there. All right, so the idea is you take the, this thing, you put it facing backwards and then you flip it over after you push it in. So I think you're supposed to really do this before uh, you install it, but of course I'm doing it the hard way. So I'm gonna put the camera down, put this in, and I'll show you the finished product. Now one other thing that came with the seats was this little add-on. Uh, for $9, there was a flex steel handle that you could buy. Um, I wasn't really sure what it was for, uh, but I thought I would probably need it, so I went ahead and got one for each seat. Unfortunately, again, no instructions, nothing online that I could tell, uh, no YouTube videos about it. So I've already figured it out on the other one. So I'm going to share what this uh, handle is for under the seat to save hopefully somebody else the kind of time I wasted trying to figure it out on my own. So here, follow me. Underneath this seat, you'll see this thing here, this um, little contraption. and. It's connected to this cord. On the old seat, there was a handle up on the side here that when you pulled it, uh, it would allow the seat to rotate and spin. And this piece here would pull back on, the, on this and open that. But this seat doesn't have a place for this. So instead, you're gonna have to take this handle and there's a little gap there, right where my finger is. And basically you have to just install it here. The handle then sticks out from the side of the, of the seat and now you have a way to rotate. So it would have been a lot easier to have known that first because then I could have removed this. This isn't the hardest thing to, to take off, but still it would have been a lot easier without the seat on. Um, it slides off and then this part's a little bit more complicated, but you just wiggle it around and work your way and, and eventually it, it comes loose from there. But play with it, take that off, and then it's just a matter of, of bolting this in really tight so that it holds on to this uh, little contraption here. And then, then the setup is done with these seats. And here's the final seat. Uh, I've left the cover on, kind of like Marie Baron, to keep myself from making this thing dirty or poked. And plus my kids can tend to do those kind of things. So this is what it looks like without the cover. And eventually I'll feel safe uncovering it once all the work is done. Uh, but for now, I'm going to cover it up. But I'm really happy with how these turned out. Let me show you the both of them in their place. So both seats are in place. They feel so much better. It's really hard to, to say how much better they feel. They feel so much better than those old cigarette burned cloth seats. And they smell wonderful too. And you can see here, you got the blood pressure monitor for checking your blood pressure while you're backing up. Just kidding. This is actually like a lumbar support. You puff that out and it helps you on a nice long drive. So for now I've left these up, but normally they'll be down and they'll cover up all this junk under there. But for now I want them up 
just to uh, make sure that I don't accidentally tear them or something. But that's how she looks underneath, nice and clean. Uh, so I ordered these new seat belts from uh, seatbeltsplus.com and I was pretty happy with them so far. I got black for the front seats and I got a pretty cool cobalt blue for uh, the dinette. So with these you just have to, uh, you know, you can either order them with the uh, hardware or you can just save what you have. So I saved these screws from before and you just connect the three point seat belt into the wall there, up top here, right up there, and then on the edge right there of the seat. Sorry for that view, not a great view, but uh, that's it. And then you put the buckle over here and it's that simple. Um, I will tell you that Shop for Seats was a pretty good experience. Uh, we ordered them, they were delayed, but again, it was COVID. The only frustration was about four or five weeks in, they sent us an email saying that their shop had been shut down for about four weeks because of COVID. It would have been nice to know that originally so that I could uh, plan accordingly. Uh, but the good thing is I reached out to them, told them that uh, you know that delay was unacceptable and they were really nice about uh, fast tracking it. So we were able to get it maybe a week or two late. It really wasn't that big of a deal. So I give them credit for their customer service. They did a great job and the seats arrived in great shape. So that's it for our episode on replacing out these front seats, the driver and the passenger seat in your RV. Hope it was helpful for you. We've got lots more episodes coming up from flooring to our bathroom renovation to the bedroom, lots of stuff. So please subscribe below and you'll be the first one to see any of our new content when it comes out. But I'm really happy with these seats. This was a good process. I've still got the plastic covers on because I don't trust myself. Uh, I know I will poke a hole in it with a screwdriver I leave in my pocket or something. So until then, I'm gonna leave this cover on just to make sure that I keep the seats all right until we're actually out and using it. But in the meantime, I'm happy with it. We're good and we're gonna wrap this episode. So thank you for watching. Really appreciate you viewing this. Again, please subscribe, please like, please comment below. It would be great to hear from you all. So until the next time, thanks a lot.